Okay. So once again, as I've mentioned, um, you know, they just got a lot of learn, a lot of Java, and so in order to do something. But once you learn all that Java, then you can really do a lot. So, and, and that's where we're headed. So the first few lectures is getting you through the basic Java, because all of this has already been done. There's so many tremendous videos on the web. There's no reason for me to reinvent the wheel. So I'm just pointing you to important information, and then we're going to go through it. You know, just through the MIT lecture notes. And in that process, we're going to hit videos, and uh, I'm going to let you look at the code I've written, and then we're going to move on from there. Eventually, at some point, we'll depart as we get into the more advanced topics, because that's not out there on the web. Okay, but as we go through this easier stuff, we're going to hit all this stuff that's already been done. So what we're going to do today is review the gravity calculator, right? Your nemesis, right? And then we're going to look at casting. And we've looked at casting in PHP before, and that's pretty much just setting something to a certain variable. Uh, we're going to look at methods and multiple parameters, and so once again, a function is a method in a class. Okay, so we've talked about classes before, and whenever you create a function in a class, it's called a method. We're going to look at return values. We're going to talk about scope just a little bit, and on some of the building blocks and math functions, which you've already seen before, and you're going to see them again in Java. And finally, conditionals, and that's just your if statement, okay, and switch statement. Uh, the MIT note notes does not treat the switch statement, switch statement, but we're going to do switch statement. And the reason being, I think switch is one of the most important uh, conditional statements you can learn. And why MIT doesn't treat it in their notes, I have no idea. But uh, we're going we're gonna to catch that. So, no, he, oh, good. Well, you, then you're ahead of what's going on here, man. You're ahead of me then. So uh, maybe I should have turn, turn it over to you and let you finish the course. <laughs> Fantastic. And I'm glad you're doing that because we've got a, lot, we've got a long ways to go. But Java's very rich. You're going to be happy as how far you go. And no matter if you decide one day, hey, I want to do another language, once you get this foundation, you can do anything. So once again, you've downloaded the course. Here it is right here. Download MIT Java course. Uh, we're going to actually bring up lecture two, and we're going to start talking about that. We're going to finish the gravity calculator, start where we start off last time. I'm going to show you an easier way to do it as opposed to what MIT did. I think they overcomplicate the process. Of course, that's MIT for you, but we're thankful to have their notes for sure. Here's a bunch of Bucky videos I want you to watch, okay? And I skipped some here. You, you don't have to skip those. You can just follow 13, 14, 15. That might be helpful. The reason I did that, he starts talking about looping, and we're not going to hit looping until the next lecture series, okay? So I probably, you know, it'd probably be more helpful for you to watch those in between, but you don't not necessarily have to. And then uh, we're going to do methods and parameters. He's got many methods. He's got um, constructors. We're going to hit that. Nested if statements, we'll hit that. Else if, conditional op operations. Averaging and math class. You want to watch all those. We're not necessarily going to do all his stuff today. We're going to do my stuff, but this is all background. So in case you miss something from me, just catch Bucky's stuff, okay? And he'll, he'll, he'll bring you up on the basics that we may not cover all today. Real, real quick here, there is another video. So there's tons of videos on Java, tons of tutorials on Java. So if anyone wants to job, learn Java, they can. And uh, it's MacHeads on YouTube. He does one on casting, and I pretty good video. Bucky doesn't treat casting, and at least not in some of his earlier videos, so I just caught one on casting. Uh, and then uh, scope, there's a little uh, web th uh, thing here, a little article on scope. Uh, I put that in there as well. And just a few things about scope here, and we'll catch that in a moment. And once again, the same review stuff. I just put a few notes at the end about constructor methods, and we'll be doing constructors today as well. So let's go to the MIT lectures, and then we'll be going back and forth between lecture notes and Eclipse today, okay? That's Eclipse, great, and that's MIT lecture notes. Woo -hoo. Once again, thank you, MIT Open Source. That's where these notes come from on their Enter to Java class. Uh, and uh, once again, they say more types, more methods, more conditions. So last time we talked about types, methods, and conditions. And let me go back on one. And wh what he wants to start off by doing is just a simple review. So let's kind of review where we're at last time. And uh, you had looked at types before. We had. And you looked at a Boolean type, which is true or false. Integers, which, uh, you know, 0, 1, minus 47, all kind of the whole numbers and negatives. Double is like decimals. Okay, that's easy to remember. And text, text are like strings, and you've done strings in PHP with the quote marks, right? And just remember, concatenation in uh, Java uses a plus sign, where in PHP it used a, a, a dot or a period. Now, the reason for using these different... Uh, types, of course, is the fact that they're lighter, like a Boolean only takes one bit, where an integer takes more and a double takes even more. So if you're trying to, you know, reduce the amount of processing you're doing, you want to do what's called strict typing. You want to make sure you've got that variable not higher than it should be, because if you're using a double for a Boolean, you're just wasting uh, processor 
um, resources. So that's why we do that. And it, uh, yeah, that's using the modulus state, the modulus statement we talked about last time. So here we go real quick here, just a simple string, and the way you create a string is you de declare it as string, and then you just use the quotes. And he's done here, he said, well, let string B equals letter, and let A equal letter A, and so this will be string C equals A plus, he got a little and there, because he's got his spaces in there, right? That allows you to put a space between those two plus B, and that will read uh, string A plus, no, string A and string B, that's what that would read. Does that make sense to you? And that's just a review. We, catched, we caught all that last time, and so we'll just move on from there. All the arithmetic operations that we've seen in PHP, you also do the same thing in Java, so that shouldn't be new to you. And here's the, your nemesis, the gravity calculator. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah, you could have cheated. You could have went to lecture two and saw the answer. And then I could, you could have impressed me. <laughs> uh, you are. <laughs> Okay, well, basically what he's doing, and he's overcomplicated this. He's got all this, uh, he declares his variables, and he's declaring a variable and kind of a little function here. Then he's wrapping all his functions together, and then he's doing a final printout. And let me go ahead and bring up Eclipse and show you how I would have done this to make it easier, okay? So let's bring up Eclipse. And in Eclipse, there's just tons of uh, example code this time. Hoo-hoo, I love that. So we got a little bit more than last time. And here's your gravity calculator. So what I'm doing in my gravity calculator is I'm declaring those initial variables, and the final variable which he has, uh, which I've commented out here, and I think he's overcomplicated. Uh, I'm just declaring that as a variable as well, and I'm setting it to zero, but it's going to change. And all I do is write down the function. The final position is equal to one half the gravity. That's a gravitational acceleration, which is minus 9.81 meters per second, times time squared. So that's falling times times falling times, plus initial va velocity times time, that's your falling time, plus the initial position. That's the only equation you need for this whole thing. Now let's look at that real quick. You said you're not familiar with physics, that's fine. But let me, here's the equation. One half g times t squared, plus velocity times t, plus initial position. Okay? And all of those parameters are being brought in through, um, through right here. You're declaring them at the beginning. Okay, and what I do at the very end is I just print out uh, oh, an object's position after falling time, which I declared at the beginning. Here's my falling time, 10, plus a second is the final position, which is that right there. So let's go and run that. Well, you have to be an MIT student in order to figure that out. So welcome to MIT. I mean, if you had all this math and physics, you went, oh, yeah, that's the equation of motion. I need to put it in the equation. And, oh, yeah, I know how to do that. All right, so there's a different assignment coming up this week, so it's more of a hourly management assignment. All right, good. So we're ready to move on. Good. So we've made it through the gravity calculator. Hooray! I knew that would be tough for you, so I went ahead and just, you know, gave it to you anyway. <laughs> uh, he's just going through his way of doing it. Like I said, I think the way I did it is a little more simplified and do it my way. And any questions from the last lecture or anything?